I remember two years ago when I decided to take my business full time, I was super nervous that I would not be able to find enough graphic design clients. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan. If you have not been here before, thank you so much for being here. In this video, I wanna share with you guys all the ways that you can land graphic design clients in 2024. But before I jump into that video, I wanna make sure that you guys know that it really is all up to you and your consistency and your effort and putting yourself out there and just understanding that our society and our world changes weekly, if not monthly and yearly. And we really have to stay up with the times to be interesting to potential clients. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some of the ways that I've found success in finding graphic design clients and also some things that I feel could be really, really powerful. I've been a designer for about seven years. It's been a really long time that I have officially started to offer design services for money and compensation. Um, I've been officially a business owner for two years and should have been sooner than that, but I was nervous. So I waited until the perfect timing, until I was ready, until I knew my plan of action for landing clients. So over the last seven years, I have noticed huge changes and how the design world has evolved and how clients have changed and how financial worldly things have changed and so much has evolved. So I like to make these videos every year to share with you guys my thoughts on the ways that you can find clients this year and the ways that I've been able to find them over the last year. But number one is to switch up your services and to offer possibly quicker turnaround services. I have noticed that our world is so fast paced. Like we are fed information so quickly. And not only that, but as you guys know, there's so many website platforms out there that guarantee that you can get a website up super quickly with templates. And not only that, but now there's Canva and these platforms that allow people to design things with a little click of a button, like so fast. But I started to offer website in a week services. And as soon as I started offering that and kind of changing my marketing language to you're gonna get this really quickly. Um, I was able to land many more clients. I am also not very good at this, but I'm not very good at planning ahead. And this also goes for me when it comes to like brand photography, for example. I, I realize I need new photography like within the week. And then I reach out to photographers wanting to know their soonest availability. And I think the same thing goes with designers. I don't feel that a lot of clients or non-designers understand or know how much goes into a brand design or a website design. And that's really our job to kind of educate on that. But I have also noticed that being able to say that they're gonna get their website in seven days or less has just become a huge success for me and has allowed me to reach more clients, especially when I was posting all of that on TikTok. So if you don't follow me on TikTok, I was doing a lot of vlogs on how I'm designing a website in a week, as well as my YouTube channel. And I think just showing the behind the scenes process, but also explaining what they're going to be getting in those five days, which is a lot of value, really spoke to my clients and I think interested them enough to reach out. So if you are wanting to land some more clients, maybe consider that. But if you are brand new and you're not quite sure like the process of what goes into branding or website, I wouldn't suggest doing that right away. But if you are like a few years into starting to offer designs for compensation, this might be something that fits within your kind of schedule and your services. And maybe you work well really quickly and that can be kind of like your niche. So I would recommend considering that, um, but also considering just offering some more unique services that stand out from other designers like packaging design or UI UX design, or maybe doing just Webflow websites or Figma design. Like I feel that we can kind of niche ourselves down in the service based of our offers instead of always niching down with clients, um, industries. So that brings me into my next point, which is niching down. I know that I was also really worried about this when I first took my business full time because I wasn't sure if I would lose out on clients that weren't within my industry. 
or weren't within the industry that I was kind of targeting. But I'm here to tell you that they'll still reach out. I feel like I was able to work with clients that I'm not only excited about, but I am passionate about and that I understand more of. But I still get clients that are not within the wellness professional industry. But I had like a film production company and companies that aren't technically within the wellness professional kind of industry, they still reached out because they're ultimately going to reach out to you if they like your style, they like your vibe, and they want to work with you. I don't really think it's going to stop them from wanting to reach out. And I always like to think of that in my head, like for hair salons, for example, I use that as an example a lot, but I feel like if a hair salon was posting a lot about wedding hair or doing wedding makeup and all of that, it wouldn't really deter me or stop me from reaching out to just get my hair done. And that actually is speaking from experience. I still go to this salon that niches themselves within the wedding kind of industry, but I still love the way they do hair. So if you kind of think about it that way, it kind of, it might help the fear that you might have of niching yourself down, but that could also potentially really help you because I feel like when designers and creatives offer so many things and kind of like post about all these different things, it can be really overwhelming for a client to know what exactly it is you're offering. So if you specifically say, I offer packaging design for coffee shops, simple as that, people will know exactly what it is you're offering. And also for SEO purposes, that can really help you. But don't be afraid to niche down. I think that when you first start off, it's good to experiment with different clients and industries and see what it is you like. But it wasn't until I started to make my messaging all around the wellness professionals and really showed my expertise in that area of how we can portray that, that I was able to actually work with clients that I really enjoy working with, but also speak to clients within that industry. You kind of have to like think about it Put yourself in the client's shoes and when you're shopping for things and when you're looking around for service providers what it is that goes through your head um and i know niching down can be scary but like i said i've noticed so much like success and improvement just by changing my messaging a little bit to speak to clients that i really enjoy working with okay the next tip that i have kind of goes into the niching down one and also the first one which is nailing down your services but this is to make sure that your pricing is fair i know pricing is like a really difficult conversation because there's a lot of designers that can charge a lot and there's a lot of designers that maybe are starting off and don't feel as comfortable charging that much or maybe you're just so confused and you don't even know where to begin pricing wise Trust me, I get it. Pricing is so tricky no matter which level you're at, but I would say that nailing down your niche and nailing down your services and what's inside of those services will really help you understand the pricing. I would suggest researching your industry that you want to kind of target and researching your experience level and like what the average cost is for that, but looking specifically at your target audiences income and what it is that they can afford can really help when coming up with your pricing and this can also help you land clients because at the end of the day it does kind of come down to what it is that your clients can afford and the investment so a lot of things go into that the marketing and making sure you're educating the clients on the value of what it is you're providing but i would suggest not charging a ton a ton amount for new business owners or entrepreneurs you can charge a lot more for established businesses. Okay, my next tip is to make your services into tiers. I, When I started out, I had a lot of different tiers. I had a smaller branding package, a medium branding package, and a bigger branding package. And I did the same thing for website. And I think that you have to be a little careful with that because if your small package has most of what they need for a really low price, they're probably gonna choose that. So I would be really like careful with this kind of side of your business to make sure that you're not screwing yourself over because that would just be so terrible if they get the small package and it's a lot of work, which you should be charging more for. But tiers can actually really help land clients and speak to clients and really make sure that you're capturing those leads. But I would suggest is starting out with tiers, but making them 
very different from each other. Like if your small branding package is a lower cost, then maybe it won't include like the full brand guideline and making sure that your bigger package includes all those things for those businesses that really want to up level and have something that they can use for years and years. So it really goes into like the wording of how you're doing it. But I think that having tiers can really speak to clients and can give them some options so that they're not nervous about the investment, but they're also excited to work with a designer. So I would suggest tiers that can really help and listing that out on a really nice like service page can also speak to clients and speak to many different clients. That's the whole reason I'm mentioning this one because if you're brand new and you're not quite sure which niche you want to go into yet, but you know that you're good at branding, you know you're good at website design, having those tiers can speak to those different industries. So that's why I would suggest maybe starting off by doing that. Okay, my next tip is to offer free resources to capture leads. I cannot stress this one enough because I was able to grow my email listing, um, my email account or my email list. Yeah, I was able to grow my email list by freebies. I Freebies are so powerful. Everyone loves something free and also they're gonna love something that is valuable and helpful to them. So what I would suggest is researching your in the industry that you're gonna go after or the the audience that you want to work with and creating some sort of freebie to help them. This could be something like a, a website copywriting workbook or a website copywriting tips or important things to have on your website. It could be like the simplest kind of like infographic guide that captures those clients you want to work with. And once you have them captured and you have them in your email listing, this is when the marketing starts. And I think I read something recently where it takes like 20, takes like 20 times, something like that, 10 to 20 times for a client or a customer to see something for them to finally take action. So it's not gonna happen overnight, but once you have their email, you can remind them that you're there for them, remind them that you can offer this service to them and just kind of pop in their invo in, into their inbox. I cannot talk today, guys pop into their inbox at least like once a week and it, they will just see your name and you'll be top of mind for them when it comes to them investing in this service. So I would recommend freebies to capture those leads, market them. I also listen to Gary V and he talks about jab, jab, right hook, something like that. So it takes like two times. I think it takes more these days to really get your clients interested before you start to sell your services. But keeping that in mind where you just start giving them information after information after information so that they already know, like, and trust you before you start to offer the services. So that's what I would recommend. Um, that can be really helpful. Okay, the next one is probably, you probably could have guessed before you clicked on this video, but that is social media. I would say about 80 to 90% of my clients right now are from social media. And this last year, I asked all of my clients that filled out my inquiry form where they found me. And a large, large majority of them found me from TikTok. So I wanted to share that with you guys because I, so I was sleeping on TikTok for a while. I kind of joined the TikTok game a little late. Um, I didn't really want to add another social platform to my plate, but it took a while. I would say it took like almost two months of consistent content for me to finally see some growth on there. But even with posting that content before seeing like followers increase, I was getting a lot of inquiry form fill outs and they were like legit awesome clients. So I would not sleep on TikTok. I would make sure that you're posting content on there because the algorithm on TikTok is, I would say a much easier to grow with than Instagram. So I would try to post on TikTok, but like I said, it takes a while to start to see some like actual results from it. So don't give up after the first week or the second week, just stick with it and you'll start to see some awesome growth from that. And also make sure that you're on your TikTok bio that you have a really clear way for them to get in touch with you because you cannot send links through the direct messaging on TikTok, but that's where I see Instagram strength. I still get a lot of clients from Instagram because we're able to like nurture conversations in the DMs and I'm able to like guide them a little more through the stories, 
but um, I would say that a lot of times they're going TikTok to Instagram and then maybe looking on like YouTube, but TikTok and Instagram are my probably number one places that I'm landing a lot of clients. I have yet to try this tip, but I wanted to share it because if I were struggling to find clients and if I wanted to work with specific clients, this is what I would do. I would go find those clients on Instagram, find those clients on TikTok, and engage with their content and show genuine interest in what it is that they're offering. I think a lot of times we just come out the gates wanting to work with them and we might sell our services right away. But like I mentioned, showing interest and giving them helpful information through your content can nurture that relationship before you reach out to them for potentially working with them. So what I would do is engage with their content for at least a couple weeks and then I would actually send like an audio message through the DMs on Instagram mentioning how much I love what they're doing and that I'd love to help them with like their website or their branding or even social media graphics and just kind of showing interest in what it is they're doing, but sending them the audio message with some personalization to it to kind of cold call the client. I, instead of actually cold calling the client, that's what I would do. I would send them a DM through audio and see if they are interested in that. I did that, I think a couple, I did that last year, a couple years ago, and I got messages from every single client. Some of the clients weren't interested at the time, but I think just doing that and showing up in their DMs and showing that you're interested in helping them and also what it is that you can help them with can be really, really powerful. All right, you guys, those are all my tips for how to land clients in 2024. Not only tips, but things that I would do if I needed some new clients. So I really hope that was helpful, but I would truly love to hear from you guys. If you wanna comment, I'll pin a comment down below in the comment area on how you're landing clients more recently. I would love to hear where you guys are finding yours, but I really hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, I would appreciate it so much if you gave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in my next one.